Hey, this is not sir, and we're in the tier 9 German cruiser Rune. It has 9 203mm guns, 12 torpedoes, 62 AA guns, a surface detect of 11.1km, top speed 32.5 knots, total health 49,500. Former modules, reduce crit chance on main battery, increase main battery accuracy, rate of fire, reduce the chance of flood and fire, faster rudder shift, concealment. For my commander, situation awareness, basic survivability, faster turret traverse, superintendent, advanced firing training, and concealment again. We are on the map, two brothers, and I'm trying to go on a flank that nobody apparently wants to head. Even the destroyer is hesitant, and uh, I see that the enemy Pensacola is about to show a perfect broadside. We fire, but unfortunately, the island is just a little bit too tall for the arc of the German shells. But the rate of fire is so extremely high that I can fire again, and this is a much better sight picture. I lead the target, and we let it fly. It's AP, of course, we're looking for a waterline shot, and oh man, 12,000 points of damage, we knock out his propulsion, and we attempt a follow-up shot, but he slowing down, going into an angle, behind an island, not going to work out, what? We get one shell that penetrates his citadel for 6k, I think. That was complete bonus. Didn't expect to hit that at all, but you know what? When you let it fly, sometimes it's going to work out in your favor. Now an enemy Ibuki shows up and we... Oh, another citadel. 10,000 points of damage. We knock out his propulsion as well. It's going to force out either the... Yep, damage control has been used. So both the Ibuki and the Pensacola are basically vulnerable to attack from a friendly. I try again, doesn't work out. He's got his angling, he's moving away, he's probably going, whoa, 10,000 points of damage? That's more than enough for you, my friend, and I don't blame him. I haven't taken any damage considering how much I've dealt. 30,000 points of damage in three or four salvos, yeah, yeah. Some of you will be saying, you know what, not sir? I think your long-range gunnery has improved, and you would be right. It's improved because I have taken some information from iChase and a couple other people. They've all talked about what the binocular actually does. Now, I did an aiming video a long time ago, and I was just purely going off a of feel. You know, my estimation was it was for a 30-knot ship, and it was 1-to-1 one -one for 30 knots, and that's sort of how I worked it out. It works really well until a point near your max range on high tier ships it does not function well because it's not correct the correct measurement for the binocular the default binocular view is that it's set for a battleship that is moving at 20 knots in the water why do i specify a battleship well a battleship's usually longer than a cruiser or a destroyer so that will dictate how much you need and the information you need is the seconds to the target and who you are actually targeting. Are you trying to kill a cruiser, a destroyer, a battleship? You should have an idea of their speed and you can quickly work out how much lead you need to give. So it says 6.7 seconds. It's a cruiser that goes around 32 kilometers, give or take, out of a turn that does slow them down. So you wanna try and lead 1.5 for around 30 knots, give or take. So. For a Pensacola at full speed, I would probably try and go 1.6, 1.7 in order to figure out where on the ship it's going to land for lead. Enemy Atlanta, 6 seconds to the target. You go 1.5 of the Atlanta and that gets you around 9, maybe 10 because they go a little bit faster and we are pretty good at landing these shots. If you use that correctly, it will assist you at near max range. It does hold true all the way up. I'm sure if I was given the opportunity now, I could land a 26 kilometer shot near max range with the Yamato if I'm given a target that's unwilling to turn. Now, you need to compensate for their speed if they're stationary like the Ibuki who's run aground, but generally, that will allow you to hit the target. So a U.S. battleship is a great test case as you're leveling up. You just go one-to-one -one on a U.S. battleship. 
if it's Colorado, New Mexico, their full speed is one to one with the seconds to the target. If they're 10 seconds out, you look for the 10 tick mark and you set it in front of their bow and it should, it should sit right in the center of their ship when the shell hits the target. Now, of course, they're maneuvering. Whenever you're maneuvering as a target, I would suggest that you chain fire to just find a area of the map that they might be. But it works out really well. It works out really well. Now, look at this game. Everyone is on the eastern flank. We've lost a destroyer scouting forward on this flank. I can't really risk going forward too much. I don't really have backup in any form. I don't have an aircraft carrier scouting. I don't have a destroyer. I don't have a battleship to give me a little bit more alpha damage. This is all on me. And we definitely know there's at least one cruiser, two cruisers, maybe even a third cruiser. There has to be maybe a battleship. I don't think there's a destroyer. And that Ibuki decides to aggressively push forward. And I didn't expect him to do quite that. He's he's the guy that pulled a knot, sir, right? So what I decide to do, I expected a Pensacola right in front of me. I'm going to angle against the Pensacola. I'm going to fire on the Ibuki. And another thing you could do to counter someone who is using this lead that was developed, perfected, you slow down whenever you see the flash of the enemy. Slowing and turning will cut so much speed off of your ship that their lead is no longer relevant and you need to read the opponent. If they're doing this, you have to compensate for that. And I'm looking for citadels. I'm not getting citadels. The Pensacola is showing back up. There's an island in the way. I don't want to show too much of my side to him. This is a juggling act. There we go. Citadeled him. 17,000 points of damage. He's using HE. I'm using AP. And we all know... Which is more effective? See you later, Ibuki. The German cruisers do so much damage with their AP. You can't afford to show your side to them at all. You will be punished hard. This Pensacola has continued to push forward, and I do a quick test shot. It doesn't work out, Natsu. The, the island's a little bit too tall. I understand. This is all chicken. Who is going to make the move first? I'm perfectly fine staying right where I am. If he makes a mistake, though, I will feel completely confident in moving forward. I sent my torpedoes. Maybe maybe he's going to make a mistake. He, he, he doesn't, of course. He's moving away. And I don't have a good shot anymore. He has an aircraft up. I have an aircraft up. Every once in a while, he's going to be scouted. I'm going to be scouted. But his aircraft has moved off, so I decide let's move forward. Let's see if we can catch him in a position where he's not comfortable. He's up against an island. He will not have his front guns in position. Now, keep in mind that the American cruisers, on the whole, generally have more guns facing forward than the rear, and the Germans are just the opposite. The Germans, on average, have more guns in the rear, so you want to chase as an American and you want to retreat as a German. That's just a that's just a very generic way to look at it. Obviously, Hindenburg, it has an equal number. There's plenty of examples where that doesn't hold true, but generally, it does. Now we fire on the Pensacola, and I get a good shot. That was an extremely angled target. Most of the shells hit the superstructure, and that's why I was able to do so much damage. If it would have hit the side of the hole, it would have bounced off and done no damage. He has a backup, though in the form of a North Carolina. Uh, I don't want none of that, sir. Please, please leave me alone. We do have an aircraft carrier that has finally showed up. Hey, this flank is pretty open. We can find success. Yes, yes, we can. This North Carolina is going to make a mistake. He's showing a side to do a little island check. Just bounce it up, go right back. Oh, the Pensacola, he ran aground. We're just going to lead him in reverse. Send in the shells, probably going to kill him. I think the aircraft carrier is also trying to attack him. It's an easy kill for me. Honestly, if there's a position where you have to decide between a battleship who's full health and a easy target for your cruiser or your battleship on that flank, I'd let them kill the easy target. Their rate of fire is so extremely high. Your torpedoes are worth far more on that battleship. 
But of course, we all recognize that the teammate, however perfect opportunity they're given, will find a way to flub it up and you regret it immediately, right? Part of it is reading your teammate. How successful have they been? Clearly, I've been pretty isolated over here after we lost the friendly destroyer. I've held the flank. I can safely assume that this player is capable of landing shots like that. That's what you need to be able to perceive when you're playing. Now, we felt like there was a destroyer trying to capture the point. There's no way he made it through. He's not on my side. He's not on the friendly side. He had to pull back, right? There's no quick way to move through that point. It's all covered up by us, except for the gap area, and that's where we're headed. We're going to try and see if we can catch sight of him. It would be really helpful if I had a friendly aircraft carrier to scout over that area. And as we make our way over there... Really? You sent torpedoes? Ah, you sneaky destroyer. He does a little bit of damage, causes a flood. Not really a big deal. We're able to avoid all but one. We put it out with our damage control, and now we are a little bit vulnerable. Just a hair. Not too bad. Now, instances like this makes me consider, should I be more authoritarian when it comes to demanding support for obvious enemy locations? The aircraft carrier is the perfect ship for intel. They can easily, without risking a lot of the ship, gather this intel and give it back to the team. We notice that there's an enemy Atlanta in the gap and he's pulling back. Perfect. He did it without me coaching him. He lost his aircraft, unfortunately, and it's blind again. But we do know there's more than just a destroyer. There's an Atlanta. And you notice I swapped to AP. I felt like I'm going to set up a broadside on this guy. I'm going to wait for him to make the mistake of coming through the gap. Because most of the time, that's what players do. <laughs> they will just underestimate what's out there. There's no way an enemy rune could be in position to have a perfect broadside and one-shot you. Well, yes, yes, there is a way. The east side of the map, completely hectic, right? Absolutely insane. It's been a bloodbath. All the aircraft carriers have been focused, pretty much 90% of their efforts on that flank. We see a dive bomber, not very successful against an Atlanta. The Atlanta has unlimited defensive fire charges. It should be up every single time. That is probably the only ship where you would run a premium defensive fire because you could have it up all the time. The recharge is great for you. You're not working through all of the charges rapidly like you would for the Des Moines, Baltimore. All these ships, you really want to have it up for when it matters. And having a shorter cooldown, really arm, isn't really helpful. It's actually pretty harmful. Now we catch sight of this Atlanta. We fire AP. The Atlanta doesn't have a lot of armor. We incapacitate something, two somethings. I did see that that enemy Benson was on the outside of the Atlanta, and he could still be coming through the gap. We are not detected, though, so either he hasn't continued forward, or he stuck himself in a very specific position that blocks most of the targets. And yeah, we're detected. Is there an enemy ship out there? There's only one destroyer on the map, and it must be the one in the gap. It has to be that destroyer that's scouting us out. All the enemy cruisers... The battleships are all behind something. Finally, I am out in the open for those enemies on the eastern side of the map to scout me out. Now, this enemy North Carolina is going to come around the island. Perfect broadside. We lead the target. We use that technique. The North Carolina is a fast battleship for the U.S., so you need to recalculate what you would expect a U.S. battleship once you hit Tier 8 or start running into the North Carolina. For whatever reason... We basically hit his gun and bounced off. Did no damage. Look at what we've got here. We've got an enemy Atlanta. Perfect broadside. We do that lead. Calculation 1.5. The time to the target, so it's 7. And we take out the enemy Atlanta. 
Eddie reacted way too slow. Maybe he didn't expect us to fire on him. I don't know. But you can't be broadside in front of a German cruiser. They will unload all their AP and do a lot of damage. Now we switch to the enemy, Atago. He is initially angled pretty well and then angled pretty poorly. So I'm going to try and kill him over that North Carolina. He's a much easier target for me. The North Carolina might be in the way a little bit and the <laughs> yeah that enemy cruiser he realizes it he's trying to maneuver back and forth we're gonna get one more shot before the island is in the way and I I checked a little bit too late look at what all my teammates have done they've retreated back to the base they've left that friendly cruiser out in the open since I'm here I'm gonna try and send my torpedoes against the enemy North Carolina we're gonna hold it a little bit just so we get just that hair closer and then we're gonna send it I'm hoping that he won't change his course we have enemy torpedoes incoming this is not good we have an island that will be an issue I need to turn and double back towards the base the North Carolina probably gonna show a perfect broadside we'll have an opportunity to fire on him however I feel like he's gonna die to the torpedoes we might have to get a little bit of damage on him. We're doing pretty good damage. But the real prize is that cruiser right behind him, the Atago. If we can take him out, then we'll basically get a double strike. And yeah, we do good damage. He's got a fire, so the flood is still sticking. I'm actually surprised at how little damage he took. And I just can't believe how much aircraft are over here. I felt like I was doing great, but I just showed up to the party when everyone left it. The cruiser was our primary target there. I would like to kill him. The North Carolina apparently has put out his issue. We get a Citadel. Nice. One more on the cruiser and that should be enough. And then we can swap to the battleship. I'm basically dead at this point. This is just a little bit too much for me. And we take out the cruiser. Good, good. The game was 1 minute and 40 seconds. If my team can take out the North Carolina and maybe another person, we could win the game. It's still up for grabs, but I'm going to be dead in the game. And I just, uh, I just went into an area that I did not fully understand the level of failure. All of the cruisers pulled back to defend the center. I didn't recognize that fast enough. And by the time I did, I was overextended and committed. The North Carolina appears to be burning from this distance. And because he had to use damage control on the fires in the flood previously, the team should easily be able to take him out. However, I don't like how much this Pensacola is showing. He's showing a ton of his side in front of a battleship at seven kilometers. <laughs> Look at my dead carcass. Just completely flipped over and taking forever to fall. He can't actually sail in that area. It's going to stop him, so he has to sail around it, which is not good for him. Keep firing that HE, my friend. You can do it. The secondaries are going off. The Saipan is trying to attack with his torpedoes. They're getting wiped out, though. The North Carolina's AA defense is pretty substantial for a Tier 7 aircraft carrier. And, oh, he catches quite a bit of damage. If he would have stopped the brakes, you know, full stop, I think he could have avoided all of that damage. Instead... The North Carolina basically leveled the playing field. And they're so close to winning, just not enough. But we definitely gave our team a good chance to win the game. I, If I would have not overextended, I think I could have lived and possibly gotten that fifth kill. How it worked out, four kills, 11 Citadels, 1,517 base XP. We would have destroyed the enemy if our team would have won the game. We did 140,000 points of damage. We definitely held that western flank hard, and we moved to the east to support it. They just couldn't answer the enemy. It was probably neck and neck, and the enemy was just doing a better job of fighting. So, that's how it goes. But that's not the only game. We've got another game, and this time, it's the Tier 6 Japanese battleship, Fuso. She has 12... 356 millimeter guns, 22 secondary guns, 52 AA guns, a surface detect of 18.9 kilometers, top speed, 
24.5 knots, total health 57,100. For my modules, reduce crit chance on main battery, increase main battery accuracy, reduce the chance of flood and fire, faster rudder shift. For my commander, situation awareness, basic survivability, faster turret traverse, and superintendent. We are on the map Trident, standard game mode on Trident, and it's, Trident's interesting. Every time I've been on this map in standard, it has felt like one team has committed to the west, one team has committed to the east. They rotate around, and they try and assault the enemy's base. And they try and avoid all contact with most of the enemy team. I don't understand it. I'm one of those, I like the defensive flank, I feel like in a position where it's 1v2, 1v3, I can overcome, I have an advantage, they have to deal with angle targets. I'm in a Fuso, I'm trying to take out this enemy York, who's the tier 7 German cruiser. And the shell speed is terrible. The AP is even worse than the HE, so most Yorks fire HE. And he set me on fire twice. I put it out. I felt like that was too much. But I'm pretty far forward at this point in the match. I was committed to helping my teammate, who's in Mutsuki. But nothing has really shown up that has just blown me away with the perfect broadside opportunity. They've all got pretty good angling against my ship, and then I notice, hmm, it's a Nicholas. I do not want him threatening my Japanese destroyer buddy, so we're going to fire on the Nicholas, and we just fire everything. And we only land two shells for 2,000 points of damage. Not quite what I was expecting. This Nicholas is just being annoying, though. He's just firing his gun. Every so often, we take a little bit of fire from the Cleveland. I think the New Mexico tried to fire as well, but that didn't work out. And look at my team. Most of it is committing to the western side of the map. Look at the enemy team. Most of them are committed to an eastern side of the map push. And I don't like what I see right now. It's a low tier game, so the battleships are pretty slow. Well, not pretty slow. They are awfully slow. U.S. battleships, terrible. Fuso, not much better. It's like 23 or 24 knots. So we're not going anywhere fast. We've got to be responsible for defense. And I'm just trying to have good angling against that huge push. The Nicholas has sustained a lot of damage. I figure, hey, maybe I can double up, get a shot on the Alba, possibly finish him off. That's the dream, right? Show perfect broadside. Let me kill you. We do our lead, but I decide, you know what, the enemy Soviet cruiser, the Kyiv, he's threatening the friendly cruiser. I can't let this happen. Not on my watch. And we miss completely, of course, because it's a destroyer, not sir. 12 kilometers. It's very easy for them to maneuver. Yeah, yeah. And I have recognized at this point, there's nobody who's going to defend our base, is there? We've got to take control of this. I don't know how many times I've seen it. It happens far too often. One team will just stay committed to the attack path they've chosen. They won't change their mind. Why? The game is so slow already. Why would you remain committed to an obvious loss? The enemy team is obviously pushing in faster to our base then we can push into theirs. We are now on the defensive. Everyone should play defensively. They are overextending. Now, I fire on the Congo. He was perfectly broadside. The enemy Furutaka did end up broadside, but he didn't hold it very steady. And oh, man! 23,000 points of damage. I think we chose wisely who to target. I think we did a pretty good job. In that poor, poor soul. Going to the bottom of the sea. Just see his propeller spinning wildly. The rate of fire on the Fuso is just so glorious. We're already ready to go on a Congo, still showing a perfect broadside. We lead him again. We fire. I am allowing this fire to burn, by the way. It's only one. There's too many enemies in the area. He, unfortunately for us, turns. We don't get any damage. 1,000 points of damage complete waste but we're almost ready to go 
Now we're going to use our heal. And yes, oh, why don't you use your heal? I like to wait just a little bit to make sure that we get 100% out of the heal. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. The Fuso is ready to go on this enemy at Fudotaka. He's got to avoid the torpedoes that held him straight. The torpedoes do a ton of damage. Uh, okay, that's overkill. We did a massive amount of damage. 413 points of damage. Yeah, Fudotaka. And I think he was actually flooding out. So just a complete failure again. That's two gun cooldowns that have basically been a waste. He was easily going to die. I didn't need to do that. But I had committed before he hit the torpedo. Sometimes they don't hit the torpedo. And I want to make full use of the torpedo holding him steady. We fire on the enemy Congo. Don't lean him quite as much. I need to keep in mind that the Congo basically is moving at the speed of a cruiser. So you need to lead it a little bit more than you would estimate for a lot of battleships and friendly battleship just north of my position. He's gonna die. Now just take a look at this game. We have probably six, seven ships on the western side of the map, probably outside of their gun range. They cannot assist us in defense. What are they doing out there? They're concentrating fire on a destroyer? Really? You think a destroyer is the primary target when there are battleships and cruisers threatening our base right now? Just awful, awful decision making by the team. You can't do that. Thankfully, someone lands a big shot or a big torpedo. Oh, that's Poimain. Good job, Poimain. He took out that Cleveland that was uh, middle of the map. I'm still working on the Congo. Perfect bow on very hard with ap we're hoping that he might make a mistake maybe we get to penetrate his armor <laughs> enemy destroyer needs to die and then we can cap uh no that's not gonna happen look at how many enemies are pushing this flank that's a terrible strategy there's absolutely no way that base capture is going to occur we have to kill the enemy now, I am showing a lot of my side. I'm trying not to show too much of my side. I just, I'm trying to get in position to take out the Congo and the Congo is refusing to show his side. Now, a better player probably would have swapped to HE and done a little bit more consistent damage to the target. But there's so many cruisers in the background. If one makes a mistake, I wanna have AP ready to go to obliterate them. That would help the team immensely. But they haven't done it so far. Now that Murmansk, he's borderline. He's borderline. He's trying to fire on us, of course. The Congo is continuing to move through the capture point. There's no way he's going to capture. It's just they're going to slowly kill us. That's the problem. They have raced to a position where they don't have to move forward anymore. They can just sit back and allow themselves to kill us as we try and defend our base. Now I decide, okay, let's fire on the Murmansk. I don't lead him quite as much. The problem with the binocular measurements, they don't really cover a angle target or a maneuvering target. So the lead is a little fudged. I'm guessing that you're trying to divide the measurement by a percentage. And I don't know that percentage if it's half or a third, but it's a little bit of a gray area. When the target is maneuvering, he turns back. He's got to deal with destroyers, cruisers that are trying to defend. We don't lead the target enough, and this Congo is continuing to chase me down. I have great angling against him now. Seems to be forgetting his strategy. Maybe he's like, oh, he's not going to fire on me. Well, I've got cruisers who have great line of fire on you. And I, I'm trying to bait him. I'm trying to get him to forget that I could fire on him. This Murmansk was showing a ton of his side. The York is showing a ton of his side. I think the York is the candidate for me. So I fire on him. I am hoping that he's distracted by everything else around him. He's going to just not maneuver. He is maneuvering a little bit. <sighs> Only 2K, man. We need more damage than that. The Congo is still chasing me. My friends still have not killed him. I don't know why. Focus the target. 
we lose some friendlies that try and attack the enemy base. They should have never tried to attack the enemy base, and this enemy Fuso, he's gonna pull a Notzer, so we lead him in the direction. Looks like the Congo finally is gonna die. This should be a lot of damage. Oh, yes! Two Citadels. It fell just a little bit too short, but 20,000 points of damage is definitely worth it. That enemy York, again, he's turning north now. He was headed south. I'm trying to protect Poimane. Poimane on comms is like, I'm trying everything I can to protect the base. I understand, man. I am here to help you out. I try to go after a target that is threatening Poimane. Eventually, he turns into the shot, and we get 3k right on the bow. We take a big shot from, I think, the Fuso. He misses completely. I think he overshot us. He didn't expect us to turn there. I didn't expect us to turn there. He has great angling. There's not really a chance of penetrating him now. He's backing up, trying to avoid. And point manning it in with a torpedo. No, but it held him straight. Recognize that the torpedoes will help you out, even if they don't hit the target. And he hasn't changed the direction. I think he expected I wouldn't fire on him. Are you really serious? 1k? 1k worth of damage? That's what it was worth it to you? So I I risk the ship in order to get the kill. We have to kill him before he can kill my friend. Ah, oh, 580. Well, that should be enough for them. Yeah, good. Point main shoots him dead. Shoot him dead. Enemy Murmansk is chasing after me. He appears to be trying. Oh, that was a good shot from that Fuso. Another good shot. But, of course, the Murmansk, perfectly broadside, very easy opportunity, and we take him out. Just a huge mistake. He probably felt like, oh, I can use my torpedoes. Well, I only had to use two of my six gun turrets. I can use the four on this Murmansk, who is also showing a perfect broadside. And we do insane amount of damage. Oh, I don't want to run into that torpedo. Cleveland finishes him off just like that. We have really helped our team out. Oh, are you kidding me? He had another set of torpedoes. Well, we're going to take it in the bow. Is it going to cause a flood? It does. So it forces out damage control. This Cleveland is definitely dead. Definitely dead. I just size up the New Mexico with the Fuso. Not really an option. We have to go after the Fuso. So... I use the front guns as I turn the ship. I would really like to kill this Fuso before the Cleveland dies, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Yep, we lose the Cleveland. The Fuso's back guns have not fired on us. We take out the Fuso with a big shot. We sustain uh, very little damage. Somehow we are still in this game. I don't know how, but now I have to deal with a full health New Mexico. Absolutely zero damage taken. That cruiser needs to be firing HE, and he needs to try and cause a flood, and I'm trying to take out those front guns. It's not really going to work out in my favor, though. I feel like I am a little bit too low health. You notice I've used every single heal. We've done a good effort. It just wasn't good enough. We're trying to rotate the back guns in position. I'm trying to maintain good angling. That's all I have for myself right now, and he's firing. Oh... Please, please, sir, don't do any damage to me. We fire at the bow, and it does nothing. Oh, man, a lot of shells went in the water. Come on, take them out. Oh, yeah, 7K or 6.7. Not enough, though. We did earn Confederate. We did earn High Caliber. His secondaries are going off. We're sort of rotating around. We set him on fire. I don't know how the Cleveland hasn't set him on fire. I'm just trying. That's a little bit too angled, not, sir. We need to get a little bit further back to the stern. We're doing okay damage, but we're just too far behind. Just not enough at this point. Just trying to help him any way I can. Set him up for damaging shots from the Cleveland, but it's... Oh, man. It's frustrating. It's frustrating because you know you did a good job defending your base, and the team chooses a strategy that is inherently going to fail. We have lost the race to the enemy base. We can no longer continue moving forward towards their enemy base. We have to play for optimal kills. We need to minimize the damage we take, maximize the damage they take. Because they're in the assault force, they're overextending, and it's going to be easier for us to hit them than it is for them to hit us. We can pull back. We can always keep the 
capture point in range, they, we know exactly where they want to go. The Cleveland, of course he dies. He had no chance of surviving. And that's Trident. We earned high caliber, confederate, three kills, 1,174 base XP, and a loss. We did around 150,000 points of damage. Again, we were not responsible for the loss. The loss was the strategy that the majority of my team decided to take. It's whatever, right? You can't change it. I hope you enjoyed these games. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you next time.